Welcome back to another Boom Bus editorial. I'm your host Terry, and today talking about the Alliance of American Football League or the AAF. Now, I'm excited. I'm going to try to contain myself, but I'm really excited because I think this can save the league. And that's not to say that the league NFL is in trouble, that the product is bad right now, but there are some concerning signs. As a football coach, as a football fan, as a person that has been covering the NFL draft for almost 10 years, there are concerning signs that are, that are leading towards the future. And so with that, I would say that this is a very, very good opportunity. So if you don't know what AAF is, you're not alone. I didn't really know what this particular league was until recently. Um, but it's not different than any of the XFL or, or the other type of professional amateur leagues that we tried to see where it's just the offshoot of the NFL. And so it's not super different, but I think, uh, the people behind it, and the way they structured it, it kind of works out. So what you have is a brainchild between a guy who did NFL films and 30 for 30 documentary series. I forgot his name, but also Mike Pereira, who was the former head of officiating in the NFL. And so with that, you got a couple legends like, uh, Justin Tuck. You got Troy Palomano, Heinz Ward, Jared Allen, a couple of those guys that invested into it and helped develop this idea. And this has all happened in the span of like three to four years, back to 2016, 2015, and it all came together. And so now uh, week one just happened this past weekend, and the season is going to happen during the NFL offseason. So first thing I'll say is that it's not different from a different league we were hearing about with Ed McCaffrey, who is uh Christian McCaffrey's dad, the former Broncos receiver, and Adam Scheffner, the insider. He was one of the other guys, and there was a third guy who's an NFL agent. They were talking about making a amateur professional league as well. Now, I'll get back to that later, but it seems like that didn't happen. But this is exactly the same formula. You're talking about eight teams in major cities. You're talking about a season that is during the NFL offseason. And then you're talking about a lot of former professional players. So basically this function, if you haven't seen it, it functions as a D league in the NBA, a developmental league and the D league, not like it used to be. Well, kind of like it used to be. I'm sorry. Right now, the D league, most of these teams are owned by NBA teams, but it used to be like D leagues were just their own teams, like their own kind of thing that the NBA kind of sponsored. And that's kind of what this is. No NFL team owns, uh, AAF, AAF team. However, um, they still are being broadcast by the NFL. So maybe one day NFL teams will own these teams and it'll become a farm league. We'll see. But for right now, it's independent. And so you play the season while uh, the offseason, the NFL happens. So you got all the attention. You got a lot of players that were former draft picks and people that didn't make rosters. And that's kind of what you have. And so you got a lot of coaches that aren't coaching right now. And there are the head coaches. So right now you got like Mike Singletary, former head coach of the 49ers. He's one of the coaches, head coaches. You got Mike Martz, former offensive coordinator, head coach. He's a head coach. Uh, you got some college guys, like a lot of people with experience that can, uh, really coach these guys up. And that's what it all kind of consists of. So simple operation, but I think it's so beneficial. Let's start number one with the very simple and obvious, the fans. The fans get a football product. In the time where we don't have other football products, the NFL draft for me is a busy time, but for a lot of people, they don't really pay attention. And so now you get more football. That's the simple thing. I mean, you get arenas that aren't being used, so they get some money, but then the tickets are cheap because it's not a big time event. So you can pack the arena with promotions and $35 tickets and so the arena's getting more money. Fans are getting to watch football. The families of the players are getting to watch football. It's all fun. That's number one. That's the easiest thing. Number two, you're talking about the development of 
the current players and coaches. A lot of these coaches right now are big veterans. They definitely already had their foot in the door. If the right opportunity comes around, they could get back in the league. But a lot of the assistant coaches, the position coaches, a lot of the coordinators, these are people that might be up and coming because it is it is a savage game. There's only 32 head coaches. There's only 32 staff. Staffs are big, but you're talking about Matt Nagy, the head coach of the Chicago Bears. He was one of the quality control intern type coaches. And he only did that because he had a prior relationship with coaches. And so if you got former NFL players like Ed Reed and them coming in being quality coaches and interns, how is Joe Smo coach going to ever get a chance? And so with this league, you got a lot more of those kind of high profile high school coaches, maybe guys that were coaching with a big time uh, NCAA program, but didn't get into the NFL. They got a chance now to coach uh, guys from arena league, all these other things, Canada league, all these people that can now coach. So you got that development. But then the biggest part is you got the player development. So I've watched a little bit of one game just to get a, a feeling of it. And it's very NFL uh, oriented. It's not college so much spread, but it's very NFL oriented. But the big thing is like in the NFL, we talk about pro bowls, all pros, super bowls, what they've done. In this league, it's all about draft status. Oh, you know, he was a third round pick. He was a former first round pick. He was a SEC All American. You know, all these different accolades. And so for whatever reason, it didn't work out with that player, but now they're here and, you know, they're a star. And one of the best things about it, people don't understand. When you put a group of people together to play sports, the best is going to rise to the top. As they say, the cream rises to the top. So if all of us aren't good players, at least one, like somebody's the best of the bad bunch. And so even though these are a bunch of players that didn't make it, they're still going to be stars. And I think that's what people forget. Like in the NFL, yes, you got stars among stars. That's the highest level of competition. But even still in college, it's not like that. College is kind of the stars amongst whoever you're playing. And so certain teams like the top level, Bama, Ohio State, Michigan, they play the top teams. But a lot of teams, you get drafted for being a star playing against, you know, not so good people. And so in this league, it's not like, oh, everybody's going to suck now. No, everybody doesn't suck. There are stars in this league because they're the best of the bunch. And so they can shine where they didn't get a chance to shine before. Now, maybe that leads them into a second chance, having more tape. Maybe they matured, got stronger, faster, and that leads them to a second chance in the NFL. But overall, it gives you a good product because that's the thing with football and sports. Like, yeah, that can be a two bad teams, but somebody's going to be the best of that group. And so I don't think it's a bad thing at all. Then you're talking about the business of it. That goes beyond question. You're talking about starter. Starter used to make NFL apparel. Now they're the NFL or they're the apparel for the AAF. And then you're talking about CBS, Aaron Football. They already got the Super Bowl, but they Aaron Football during the offseason. NFL Network has a few games. TNT has a few games. TNT never has football games. So you're talking about the, the television broadcast as, aspect of it where people want content. And so you got a good, you got football during the non football season. People are going to watch, but then that also adds the number of eyeballs that are watching this game. And so it just seems like everybody's kind of winning overall with that strategy. And then the, the biggest thing about this that um, I think is not happening yet, but here's the potential. The biggest potential for me is what Ed McCaffrey and Adam Schefter were trying to do. They were trying to make a professional league, semi-professional league that was comprised of former, or not even former, okay, technically former college players, but players that haven't been drafted. So um, you think of, a, uh, who's who's a good example? 
I would say like a Janoris Jenkins. That's the only one that comes to mind right now. But Janoris Jenkins, Pro Bowl corner for the Giants. He was at Florida, and then he got kicked out and went to Alabama A&M, excuse me. And so he went to the lower level college because he messed up his chance with the big college. They were trying to create a league where instead of getting to a lower level college, you went on to go to a semi-pro league. And so with the semi-pro league, you would get paid like a pro, but not big money, about $40,000 a year, uh, average salary. You would be able to show your skills off to scouts still and play with other players. So this was more of a place for people who were good players, but didn't get big time recruitment. People who got big time recruitment, but messed up. And instead of going to another school, they wanted to make money. So very much like what the G League is supposed to be in the NBA in the future, where instead of the NBA players choosing to spend one year in college, they can spend one year with the G League and get paid and be a semi-professional and still get scouted. And that's what Ed McCaffrey now we're trying to make. Now, this isn't exactly that with the AAF, but it could be a great mix. You're talking about players that were high profile going to the AAF. I saw a little bit. I saw the monster Moore, the Montre Moore. He was from Texas A&M and he was supposed to be a top pick, tested poorly, got drafted, but didn't do much in the NFL. Now he's in the AAF, but he was an SEC monster. And so again, you're talking about high profile name that is getting a chance to redeem himself. Match that with a player who I don't, I don't know, throw a name out. Say, say for instance, Joe Mixon from the, uh, Cincinnati Bengals. Say that when he, he punched that girl at Oklahoma, he got kicked out. And instead of going to another school, he went to the AAF. So now you got the Montre Moore. And Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon, one of the top five star recruits, left Oklahoma's now in the AAF. Now he gets to play for a season here where other people can scout him and see him in the prime time. And then he's eligible for the draft. So I can see this as a way for a pipeline for people to go to, from practice squad to active roster and from uh, out of high school to college. I think you can marry the two because the big draw with Ed McCaffrey and their league was that it was going to be pro style systems. It wasn't going to be any spread systems because they talked a lot about these quarterbacks who spend a lot of money to see quote unquote quarterback gurus. They spend a lot of money going to quarterback camps to learn under center, five step, uh, seven step, three step. All these different things, pivot handoffs, play action rollouts. Then they go to college and it's just all completely done away with. It's a bunch of pictures and spread and hand signals and clapping. And so they feel like they wasted their time. And then the NFL, the spread quarterbacks don't translate as well. And so their idea started with a league that where pro style systems would come together for the running backs, for the receivers, because quarterbacks have fell off in the draft. But receivers are now the real big target. They are terrible now. I'm going to just be honest. They are not professional receivers. And they're sucking now and losing out because of the pro style system. Or, so, I'm sorry, the spread system. And so the idea was to make a league where they had to play pro style in the develop these players to be ready and i think you can mix that into the aaf where you could run a three four four three uh three three five whatever you can run a spread you can run a, a two tight end you can run whatever system you want but it's not going to be straight spread college style and you're going to have to learn professional technique from professional coaches and so i think that if you incorporate that idea from Ed McCaffrey into the AAF, where 
you start blending in college players or former college players that want to get drafted, you can have a monster of a league. During the offseason where we all miss football, where we want to see, as draft people, we want to see tape. I can watch live tape and really watch some of the top prospects. So it only takes one. And that's why they went for big names. You got Jared Allen, Heinz Ward, Troy Palomano to back it. Big names. But then you get some of the coaches. You get a Mike Singletary, Mike Martz. Big names. And then they got players. Denard Robinson from Michigan, who's a big college player. DeMonster Moore, who's a big college player. You got names. And so it only takes one of these college kids, five-star recruit, Go in as a freshman, say, I'm not feeling it, and then go to the AAF. Or eventually you get one recruit that says, you know what? I'm not going to college. I'm going to the AAF. One big star recruit that would completely change the game because we're a herd mentality. Society is a herd mentality. We're going to wait until the one person takes a dive, and once we see it's okay, then we're all going to do it. And so it only takes one. And I think they set it up well. They set it up so well. Um, Ed McCaffrey and them, I don't know if they had the business plan to get it done. I don't know. I didn't see it. But the AAF with um, the guys with uh, Mike Pereira and them, they set it up right. They got the designers and the clothing and equipment from Starter. They got the TV deals with everybody. And they got the right coaches. And it's starting off pretty well. You watch it and it's football. That's the thing. If it's a good team or or if it's a great team going against a bad team, it looks weird. But if it's a okay team versus an okay team, it looks like football. And so I have no problem with these games and these leagues. And they try different things too. Like they don't have a kickoff. If you want to do a quote unquote onside kick, you have to do a uh, uh, a first and 12 yard play. And if you convert, you get the ball back. If you don't convert, then the other team gets the ball. That's their onside kick. So you can try different funky things like the XFL, but it's more professional than the XFL. It's not that goofy stuff. So I really like it. It's a place to have fun. Much like the preseason, it might be a place where the NFL can get a deal with them and say, Hey, try this rule out. Try this rule out, and we can see how that rule works in the AAF, and then we might bring it to the NFL. But then you build a bridge. You build a bridge where these players can be an AAF all-star and then maybe make a team in the NFL. And then eventually, if you got 32 AAF teams owned by 32 NFL teams, that's the ideal situation because now you got 32 teams, you got in uh high school players saying, maybe I don't want to go to college. I want to go to the a- AFF and I want to go. I could pick my place to go or maybe you do a draft. It's so many ways you can do this. I think this can save the NFL. I think receivers, offensive tackles and quarterbacks, those three are suffering from spread offenses. They are not being developed traditionally. They get to the NFL and they're not as good. You have guys like um, Pat Mahomes, not a spread guy. He's an air raid guy. Very different. They pass the ball a lot, but they read pass progression. And he had a lot of issues, but he got to sit with Andy Reid. He progressed. You got Deshaun Watson. Straight spread guy. Got to the uh playoffs, didn't look as good. You got Mitch Trubisky, more of a spread guy uh with North Carolina. Didn't exactly read correctly. And so spread guys can make splashes. Lamar Jackson can make splashes. But then when it gets to crunch time, the playoff time, they don't perform well. And so getting quarterbacks to the actual progression of being good you got the nfl tyree kill uh like what six rounder 
You got uh, Antonio Brown, low rounder. You got these type of guys that aren't top 10 receivers being good because some schools run pro style offenses. Some schools teach a little better. And so even if you aren't the top numbers in the NCAA, you can come to the NFL and be good because you actually know how to play receiver. And then offensive tackle, same thing. So I think this is a way where you can get pro style coaching all the way pro style coaching with some of our younger up and coming stars and some of our guys that need redemption. I always talk about bust. We talk about players being bust. Jared Goff, everybody says a bust after seven games in his rookie season. He's a bust. He's done. We talk about Terrell Pryor. What a bust. But then he had a big year. Now he's good. Then he's a bust again. We don't know. You talk about all these guys that have redemption stories. Andrew Luck, he's done for the count. He's back. Oh, we don't know. Football's about situation. You got talent, but it's about who's around you. It's about who's coaching you. It's about the situation. Uh, we talk about Randy Moss. He was done. Went to the Patriots, put up career numbers. It's all about situation. And so while a lot of casual fans write these players off of Denar Robinson, Demontre Moore, all these people, they might get into a situation where they can show their stuff and be dominant again. And then maybe they get another chance. And now we're talking about a league of second chances. And so I just think this wins all around. Right now, it is former NFL players looking to be back in the NFL. That's what it is. You even got to, I forgot one linebacker. He retired because of CT concussion issues. He said, I don't want to be concussed. But now he's back playing in AAF. Probably can't get into the league because he pretty much was scared but now he can redeem himself you got so many reasons why these guys are here but they're trying to get back in the nfl i think if you add in the college players this can absolutely go off the charts so uh probably a lot more to say but i'm gonna leave it at that go to the comment section let me know what you think thumbs up subscribe get the conversation started share it around and thank you for listening